Hey guys, I hope earlier in the week you watched the Vision F1 video and you learned a little bit about the history of carbon fiber and the way that Supercross has advanced all of our frame technology over the years. Oh, wait a minute. You need to see this in a minute, but not now. So in that video, we spoke a little bit about the history of some of the Supercross carbon fiber and the way that we evolved some things and everybody around here was like, oh Bill, we need to know a little bit more. And figured if everybody around here wanted to know a little bit more, you might want to know a little bit more too. I hope you've subscribed. I hope you're tuned into this channel and you're learning a little bit more about some BMX history, but uh, I think we got something you want to know a little bit more about. Come on in, let's go. All right guys, as we said here a minute ago, you probably watched the video on the Vision F1. That's the absolute epitome of carbon fiber BMX race frame technology. In that, we were talking a little bit about how we here at Supercross started working on our first carbon fiber BMX frame. 1994, 25, 20, yeah, about 25 years ago. Everybody here was kind of asking some questions about, you know, how we started doing that and what happened, you know? I figured that was, you know, quarter of a century ago. So I went digging around in the shed and found something for you. What we have here, the remnants of the very first carbon fiber Supercross BMX frame. This one here is serial number 21 five three so it's an early early serial number there was less than 50 of these frames ever made unfortunately a lot of people know these as the bmx plus death frame or you know whatever it came out in the september 1995 issue of bmx plus strange story on that one you know a good friend of mine was the editor of bmx plus back then and we had been putting these frames out there and some riders were racing them at the time uh, john gonzalez was on them we had a few of our other riders on them and everything was moving along great so bmx plus they had seen it they had wanted to do a test we said sure you know let's do this i think this is great you know this is the first carbon fiber BMX frame out there. I mean, not just the first carbon fiber Supercross, but the first carbon fiber BMX frame. So they had it set up. Kiyomi Waller was supposed to do the test. He was supposed to do it out at Sycamore BMX in Simi Valley. So it was supposed to be a BMX race frame on a BMX race track. We sent them out the complete bike. It was all built up super badass bitch and race bike somehow something changed last minute it ended up becoming neil wood from snm doing the test down at sheep hills so all of a sudden they took a race frame and they took it to the trails i mean it's one of those things to where i i, I guess it was more commonplace back then to have your one bike do everything and this is when things started to really separate to where you had a race bike or you had a trails bike. And this is where the dividing line really started. You know, I guess we should have put a warning label on the bike, you know, race use only, you know, uh, mountain bikes were doing that. You know, Yeti had the fro for race only. We probably should have done that. I mean, it's kind of like using a toaster in a bathtub, you know, you can do it, but you're never going to get to butter that bagel. That's why they have that warning label on that. You know, it's somebody did it at one time and it ended really badly. And that's kind of what happened with this is, uh, you know, a dirt jumper took it to the dirt jumps and we had one end up badly. I've got a guy up in Northwest that still is racing one of these from back in the day and keeps letting me know. This is the heart of the SX250 carbon fiber frame. Obviously it's missing the carbon fiber. When everything went bad back then, we got rid of all the carbon fiber that was in the warehouse. I didn't want to see it, didn't want to look at it, didn't want to talk about it. Carbon fiber proved catastrophic. And hey, you know what? We tried, it didn't work. Obviously as we fast forward now, we know it does work. Here's what we were doing back then. We are taking our regular SX250 frame. And as you can see, it was full fixture welded just as we would do our regular chromoly frames but we had these lugs and these lugs had two inch internal pieces that would the carbon fiber would slip over the carbon fiber would be bonded to the head tube had the same thing to where you had an inch and a half inch and three quarter extensions that would be bonded in so that that way 
you choop, everything was set up and you had your frame. It was really cool. I mean, uh, it was the full SX250 rear end. You still had your chain stay cross brace. You had your seat stay brake bridge, even though everybody was running cantilevers back then. Regular American bottom bracket with the machine and lip. We had our traditional dropouts on the head tube. We had, at this point, we had gone to the press on rings. And with the press on rings, what we were doing where other companies were machining head tubes to try and keep the head tubes from flaring, we were actually pressing on a secondary ring. So that way we had two different pieces of metal so that if a head tube did try and flare from a heavy impact, you had two pieces of separate metal that would have to choose to try and flare at that same point. So we never had head tubes flaring. So it was all the SX250 technology or the SX125, if you had a Pro, 250 was the Pro XL. The six bar design, it, it was all there. Everything was here. There is one chrome one of these that's out there. The chrome one was actually a cruiser. Not sure where that one went. It was an SX500, because that's what we were calling the cruisers back then. And there's, uh, from what I know, there's four to five of these out there in existence still. This is something that, you know, maybe, maybe we'll do as a retro build. Uh, the technology exists to, to recreate these and make these a, a rideable, viable thing. Maybe we'll make some of these. This was a, a cool little project. As you can see, it's rusty and crusty and old. I mean, I pulled these out of the shed and didn't even dust them off or clean them off for you guys. I just wanted to make sure that you could see exactly what it was. And it's just a good part of Supercross BMX history, part of BMX history, part of chromoly race frame history and part of carbon frame history. There was a lot of mountain bikes back in the day that were starting to do similar things. The Yeti C26 was a very formidable mountain bike that was doing a similar thing. That's kind of where we were starting to get the idea. We were big Yeti fans back in the day. John Parker was a local guy and he used to emulate BMX a lot. A lot of people don't know that the original Yetis uh, were based off of the Mongoose Cost Cruiser and you know it, it was pretty cool watching what they were doing and they were trying to advance mountain bike technology and we were still trying to advance BMX technology and here's where we're at and you know now fast forward as we're in our 34th year of BMX we're still pushing everything forward so if you didn't see the video on the Vision F1 make sure you go take a look at it and you'll see exactly where we're at if you're into the retro stuff and you like the history and like what we're doing keep checking back here on the channel because we've got a lot more of this stuff coming up lots of cool things coming up for you so make sure you subscribe make sure that you're liking these videos and we'll keep pushing these things out for you and making sure you've got some good things to watch and some good entertainment and some great bikes to ride.